the frustrating thing is there was that air, the, the air of the disabled person here. We've got to be careful. He could come around, you know, he could, CBC's mind was thinking lawsuit, lawsuit, lawsuit. So yeah, there'd be that, that, that'd be a little problem right there. I never said this ever, ever, ever to anybody. So, you know, it's between you and me and I, whoever millions of people have seen this. Welcome back to Puppeteers. We're your hosts, Adam Krutinger and Cameron Garrity. And today is a very special episode. We have Terry Angus on the show. Welcome to the show, Terry. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> sure thing. So good to have you. And uh, for those who don't know, Terry is uh, an incredible puppeteer, um, best known for his work on uh, Fraggle Rock and uh, is an amazing puppet builder. He performs his own original character, Butch G. Cat who's right uh, right by his side. And um, you may also know him as um, the individual behind um, designing the master replicas, um, Kermit and Fozzie and, excuse, Kermit and Animal and Gonzo. Um, so, uh, Terry, it's just- And Fozzie. And Fozzie. And that's right. That's and right. Fozzie. They, 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 they killed it right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Terry Angus, it's just such a delight to have you on uh, Puppeteers. So thanks, thanks for being here. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. So we like to start off uh, just with what's going on now. Would you have any projects or anything that's going on right now? Any builds? Uh, not anything bigger or gigantic at the moment. Um, uh, right now, I'm I'm building a puppet or two for some people uh, online that ask, you know, uh, their clients, and they ask me to build them, and I tell them the price, and they go, <gasps> and, okay, uh, and they'll and and I uh, I'll build it. Now, the prob I I used to be able to build these puppets in like one month now with my back the way it is uh, it takes much much longer now because i i have a degenerative disc disease now and that can really hurt that, that really grabs the hips and you know and that really hurts yeah, but absolutely. uh yeah so because of that i've had to slow down with the building and and uh, uh not do, i can get about three or four hours out of a day of mm. building kind of thing yeah. before my yeah. uh, back and hip sort of start telling me i don't like you uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What? It's yeah. got to be tough because I know even even for me, and and I'm thankful that I am in, in pretty good health right now, at least that I know of. Um, but yeah, even just hours of building, it does to you know you generally you're you're sitting down and you're kind of hunched over your work because a lot of what mm -hmm. it is is so small and intricate. So that's amazing that you're um, able to 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 keep keep on going and and keep creating your art. I love that. Right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it doesn't help that I had have was also born with cerebral palsy, and uh, over the years that has sort of sort of shifted my pelvic area there, and uh, it's sort of twisted the spine as well a bit there. So that didn't help either, <laughs> as far as that goes. That you know this whole thing goes. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, yeah, like you said, I'm I'm still trying to keep in there slowly, but just trying to keep in there. Yeah, I, mean, I don't do the performing like I I, I used to. I, I love performing more than building, so I've had to cut back on that and uh, just strictly build for the moment. So, yeah, yeah, you're building. And, and uh, pardon? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, the building. Uh, I, I I one of the latest things I had been working on and sort of still still am is the called uh, 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 MI understanding. Am I understanding? And I built them uh, puppets for that. I built them a dog, a uh, and a uh, chicken, uh, whose name is Emmett. Yeah, it's a it's a male character, but it's a chicken. But anyway, uh, we won't get into that. Uh, anyway, uh, I built the puppets for that. I was originally going to be the one to do uh, the dog Gulliver, and uh, that's when my back kicked in, and I had to say, okay, I, I guess I can't, I can't do it as much as I'd love to and handed it off to uh uh yeah and i had to hand it off to them and they got somebody else to do it yeah no, frank meshkalin is doing it yeah oh wow okay yeah no you know one other thing i just wanted to say too is uh what a humongous inspiration your work has been to me personally in in a well, lot of you. in a lot of ways i you know i i credit it to kind of what got me into puppetry it's a story that I tell people all the time is that uh, so I, I was involved in theater for a long time. I did a little shop of horrors back in 2008 and the head puppeteer that they hired is my good buddy, Zach Homiser. And he'd been doing puppets for a long time. But, uh, you know, one to one rehearsal, he brought one of his own puppets that he brought and he showed it to me and I, and I saw it and I was like, oh, my gosh. <sighs> 
what a beautiful piece of art. And it was uh, one of uh, a puppet that he had purchased from you on eBay a long time ago. It was um, this uh, this gr- uh, gray frog with that uh, with that uh, kind of smoking jacket. smoking jacket on. Uh, that <laughs> I can't. I don't remember if Zach named him Sebastian or if you uh, had him named Sebastian at the time. I think I think we named him Sebastian. Yeah, I, th- I, I think my, it was. My wife too. came up with some of the names for any of the ones that I had put on eBay, yeah. kind of thing, and I think she came up with Sebastian. I think. Uh, if I'm wrong, <laughs> shoot yeah. me. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was that. Yeah, I think I think it was yeah. that. But I just I just remember because you know again I I talk about this uh, in some other interviews that I've done. But like before that, I just you know I never saw puppets as a thing. Like when I watched Sesame Street or for an old episode of the Muppets, they were just characters to me. But seeing right. a Henson quality puppet in front of my eyes made me realize, wow, this is a piece of art. And something that I want to be a part of, and seeing your creation in person is what started me into. I don't know to, whether to thank you or to blame you. <laughs> what got me oh, yeah. into to a, this in a big way. way? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can take it either way. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. So th- thank. So I, one thing I just wanted to bring up uh, w- with mentioning that is. Um, it seemed like back back then, at least, that's something that you would do often is putting building a character of, I, I'm assuming, your own design and putting mm-hmm. it on eBay rather than doing only commissions. Can you talk a little bit about what uh, what prompted that? Well, odd thing is, uh, yeah, the, the uh, yeah, I didn't know of any other way to make money at the time. <laughs> So it was, oh, you know, well, do... disclaimer, puppet building is not a good way to make money, people. <laughs> no, it is not. It, <laughs> it is, is not. not a good way was... to make money. Oh, sorry, sorry, it was on. the only way I could make money at the time. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, sure, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> Performing, I made better money than I did puppeteering. So, Always, but, uh, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, I put them up there and, and uh, as some did well, some didn't, you know, you know, it's, it's a good and bad sort of thing. And it wasn't until I made the master replicas that I started getting commissions. Mm-hmm. kind of thing to do puppets because they could stay it was more in the area where people who who wanted that kind of thing could see it kind yeah. of thing on ebay i guess ebay would start no no it wouldn't start that the master replica started that because people could see that i could do that well of a, a job kind of thing yeah so yeah yeah what what prompted that how did you get connected with them to be uh you know asked to work on those projects the master replicas oh a wonderful friend of mine by the name of kenneth plume uh, he, he, uh, he put them, he pointed them in my direction. I guess he was talking to them and pointed them toward me and asked me if I would mind doing that. And I said, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, that depends. <laughs> you know, do, are they getting permission for this? And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Thing? And, yeah. And they said, yes, Disney's giving permission to do that and i said well i'm on i'm on board and one of the stipulations was that uh uh, after i built my prototype kermit and showed them that yeah i could do this uh i told them you know it's very hard to do this without the patterns Mm -hmm. because if you don't have the patterns they're not going to be replicas they're going to you know they're going to be off in one way or another of it yeah yeah i i and i knew they had uh, patterns because when, when I worked on Fraggle Rock they had patterns for them and stuff so I said the condition was that I would have these patterns so I could make them as accurate as possible kind mm-hmm. of thing so um, uh, they sent me the patterns and and I was able to work from them from that the Kermit wasn't off the off the patterns that was my own figuring it all out with p- photographs and everything mm-hmm. and I, I got a hold of, of Mike Moore who had access to to be able to measure what the Kermit's arms were and all that stuff, so I could try to get it as best as I could. And uh, uh, from there, they, they liked it so well. And I guess uh, they, they showed it to, uh, to, to Heather, I think. and Or was it least? Oh, shoot, I don't remember. Heather, I think it was Heather, I'm not sure. Uh, but um, uh, she sort of said it was almost like the real one. Yeah. kind of thing so that sort of sold it right there yeah it's yeah. a great compliment yeah, yeah. wow yeah. i wonder i wonder why um i wonder why they didn't go first to like 
the company. Like uh, it, it seemed a little strange to me that they decided to find an outside person, even though you do have, you, you have yeah. connection. Oh yeah, ching, ching, ching. Yeah, <laughs> ching. Right. yeah. though I'm sure yeah. uh, yours was not cheap. Money. It's probably a lot Lula, cheaper Dinero. than the, yeah. Henson Company would have. Co- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Puppet, I, yeah. I, I see it. They, yeah, they knew a guy like course, me yeah. didn't know how much I was worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you talk so, a little yeah. bit about? So you did. Uh, you did um, the the Kermit one, and then it was the Gonzo, and then the animal, right? And then and then animal, you, and then you built Fozzie. Can you talk a little bit about what happened with that project? I have some guesses. Um, they they lost the contract that they had with people in China to that were mass producing them, and they did change them from what I, even I gave them because they felt that it wasn't, you know, Gonzo's nose is reticulated foam. Right. Well, I tell you, that sucker, that'll that'll crumble away in 10 years yeah. kind of thing, maybe 15, if you're trending on how you treat it, I guess. But um, uh, so they decided to change things on it, and that's why they, they were not really true to what rep, the real McCoys would be uh, because of that. But when we got in with, they, they lost the contract with those guys because they were, they were really, they got, from what I understand, they got pretty, uh, 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 weird about trying to do them the way I did them kind of thing. They, they, they were, they were, they were getting upset because they were, they were, people were depending on them to make them exactly like the real things. And they, there was a lot of pressure on those guys. And when they got in, uh, you know, they got into Fozzie, they threw up their arms and said, no, <laughs> no way, no way, yeah. no way. So that took care of that. And then they tried to find another company to do it and they couldn't find anyone else. It was some one company that tried to make, build one. And they shot me a few pictures of what it would have, uh, you know, what it was looking like. It was like one of those stuffed toys that you overstuff. Yeah. Kind of thing. Oh. They, they shoot these, fiber filling into a, a, a stuffed animal and, and it looked like it so no, no it looked nothing yeah, like no Fozzie. wow no Interesting. no no so then he's got a oh there he is he's got a shape wow. to him hey eh? wow. wow that looks beautiful <laughs> ah, hey my wife loves children but i can't bear them ah. <laughs> oh, thank you oh. thank you that's, funny. that's not my hand <laughs> you know, actually, you, go. you know, I got a question about uh, the Gonzo one because that's you know I didn't even think of that. So the nose that ah. you built for the original one was the carved reticulated foam. Yes, and then you Correct. sent it them. Oh yeah, because then, so were you part of that decision for them making nope. that change at all? So then, when you nope. it, when the when it showed up, you're probably like, what the what is that? <laughs> well, they told me they would be making changes. And I said, well, I mean, it's going to change it. It's going to change it. You know, uh, I, I asked Tim Miller years ago uh, in uh, on Fraggle Rock when I was trying to make uh, a prototype of, of my puppet, Morris, uh, Morris, which was the background Fraggle that I played on Fraggle Rock. Um, when I was trying to duplicate him, I couldn't get access to reticulated foam at that time. All I could get was the soft... Uh, you know, plush foam yeah. mm-hmm. kind of thing that you have here. And I asked him, well, would using two different foams change the look of the puppet? And he said, yes. Mm. So that told me, okay, well, anything you change is going to change yeah. the whole the Yeah, thing, I'm surprised you know? they made the choice that they did because I, I do have yeah. that uh, Gonzo Master replica. And yeah, the second you look at it, you're just like a little bit like, oh, like that. That nose is not definitely not. And not only is it not the right no. fabric, it doesn't even look like they put that much thought into choosing the texture of it. Um, like mm-hmm. it, at that point, I think I would have rather had like something sculpted and cast and just textured to look a little bit more like yeah. a foam. Where even even uh, even if you were to do it in plastic but gave it the effect of exactly of it being uh the foam yeah by, uh, and that could be easily done by taking foam into a wet to a a, a, a clay sculpture even and yeah. just taking the foam and just pat it on and just 
pull it off, it'll look like it, you know, yeah, in reverse. Putting but the it'll texture look like, on it. Yeah, putting that texture yeah, on it. Yeah, it'll put the texture on it. So I, I I thought, well, you know, even plastic would have been preferable if they, you know, if oh, they had absolutely. textured it in a certain way, absolutely. probably. I'm only guessing. Yeah. But um uh yeah, no. So none of the changes the changes that were ever made, I, I didn't have any anything to do with. They told me about it and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah, that's gonna that's gonna cost them kind of thing i thought yeah that, that, yeah well what did you think about that did that affect thing. your like wanting to necessarily continue working with them because in a way oh i want it's, to, it's a yeah, representation I, I, of your work too like if, if i did that i'd be like yeah. what you're you're changing it like that no it's not my work anymore you know yeah I well be... i i knew i knew i had no, no say or yeah. control over anything and i and you learn these kind of things way early in life uh in your younger years that you you know they're things that you're not going to be able to control so better let it go yeah you know, yeah that's or you're going to be in pain boy cut, you gotta cut your losses sometimes yeah <laughs> right let's drive yeah. yourself crazy yeah wow. yeah and i don't we don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> well to an extent we already have since we're in the puppet industry <laughs> you know it'd be a certain <laughs> kind of crazy to to, to to dive into that uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of, of that, how, how did you first decide to dive into the puppetry? Like where, what were your sort of early, um, influences or, or thinking like, oh, this is something that I'm really interested in more than just being a, a run of the mill fan of puppets. Way years ago, a long, long time ago, back in the early age of stone age, no, it didn't go quite that far. No, uh, no, it, um, I think I, I was half, hmm, probably halfway through high school. And during that, I liked it doing impersonations kind of thing. So I would, the celebrities of the day, uh, I would try to impersonate, like uh, we'll say Don Adams from Get Smart or, uh, you know, yes, Chief, here it is, the all purpose. <laughs> you know, <that laughs> yeah. kind of, <laughs> sorry about that, Chief. So yeah, uh, so I try to impersonate people uh, at that time and i did a couple of variety concerts with just doing stand-up you know comedy doing the impersonations and stuff and um i uh somehow somewhere puppets got into it um uh i used to play around with puppets when i was a kid it's all and i used to like the muppets so somehow that came in there and i liked it very much more nah, now you can you know get away and take me away and, and I can still perform and that kind of thing. So, um, uh, so I, I ended up melding the two and I, uh, it took me about a year to learn the Kermit the Frog voice by using a frog prince record. Mm -hmm. Um, so you would, uh, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here, take off the needle. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here, put the needle back on. And today we're going to tell a fantastic story. Today we're going to tell a fantastic story back down, you know, and you do it like that. Kind of why didn't you just look on youtube <laughs> pardon <laughs> so why didn't you just look on youtube instead well you see um the youtube wasn't invented at that time <laughs> that's back this in the 70s time, baby kids. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah so this back is the, in the 70s, 70s although wow. i was yeah. born in 1962 do the math <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. that's funny but uh, yeah no uh yeah so so i did that and and uh the humor in the Muppets head was really, really funny. It's not just for kids, but for adults too, that adults could, could laugh at, you know, um, uh, Gonzo would, Scooter would tell Gonzo, Hey, chief, I signed Gonzo to a mandatory contract. Did he sign it? No, oh, he ate it. Well, <laughs> let's hope the contract is not binding. <laughs> oh, anything. And that's so yeah. what kids going to know what that's about. Right, yeah. And that's on the Muppet show. I think that's actually from the Muppet show. I got that, but, uh, yeah uh so yeah it was a lot of um uh and i had to hone voices and stuff i learned how to do some of the other characters you know and fluid pepper you know that kind of thing uh uh scooter the golfer um you know different different one rolf the dog yeah rolf yeah the dog played the piano you know so you try to do all these different voices and stuff so, yeah yeah and then uh uh during my 12th uh grade 12 um my final year at high school, uh, a teacher came to me with an article that Jim Henson was doing Fraggle Rock in Toronto. And uh, uh, I looked at it and I took it to my guidance counselor, uh, uh, Don Wallace, in, in uh, you know, Pugwash District High School. Um, I said, would this be a crazy thing to try to go for? And he said, no, all they can say is no. 
So I thought, okay, great. Now the problem is how to get over there and, and do that. Boy, selling this is not going to be easy to my folks. So, you know, so uh, anyway, through unknown to me, uh, my uh, teachers and friends, uh, mostly the teachers of, of Pugwash District High School, uh, the Tom and Joe Webb, uh, uh, Don Wallace, Miss Wallace, and all, a lot of people you wouldn't know, but I know. But um, uh, they got money together to fly me up to Toronto. Uh, to audition for Fraggle Rock and uh, had a, quite a harrowing taxi drive to get to the auditions. But uh, the first audition we were, was with uh, Richard Hunt and uh, who did Scooter, Janice Beaker and those guys. And uh, he told me to stay till Friday. Luckily, I had an aunt in around Toronto there that I could stay with. And on Friday, I would go in and see Jim. And I uh, had a, uh, a sort of a, a small current, the frog puppet that I... Uh, had the suitcase, you know, where Jim couldn't see what I was doing, and I would bring these characters one by one out. And uh, the Kermit I had at that time wasn't as good looking as, as this one right here. And uh, I would pop around the suitcase and say, Hi, Daddy! <laughs> and uh, Jim liked that and said, Oh, what the heck? You know, in his own Kermit voice, and it's another me. So uh, uh, they, some of the guys around the room said, Okay, who can he do? So they started yelling out, characters for me to impersonate and I would try to impersonate them and and uh um I didn't really know if I got the job or not until um uh, Jim brought out this book the, of Muppets and Men the making of the Muppet show I guess you, you guys should know that yeah. um and he opened it up and started signing it uh and I thought well okay this is uh this is either um thank you very much for coming uh don't let the door hit you on the way out or I've got the job, one or the other. And as he's signing it, I said, does this mean I've got the job? And he looked at me, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. So he signed it uh, uh, to uh, Terry uh, from Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog, the other one. Uh, so he signed it like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then got in all five seasons of Fraggle, or four, four seasons of Fraggle Rock. Felt like five, but four. Anyway, um, uh, it was in through beginning right to end. So, yeah. That's wow. amazing. What else? Yeah. Get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just wondering. So, you know, you, you say you were doing, like, stand-up and performing, and you, you were starting to get that interest in trying to find the voices and such. But um, what kind of experience did you have? Like, were do, do you think you were – obviously, you were going to be learning on the job, but, like, had you had monitor experience? Had you – um like oh yeah kind of, oh, okay yeah at, yeah at my high school we had a an old reel to reel videotape machine that had a camera and that's how i learned how it was a black and white thing but you know i, I would learn how to use a monitor so i was ahead of the game when i came in there and i did a lot of reading research mm -hmm. uh i bought the making of the muppet show of muppets and men before i went up to audition and i've seen different stories from you know time life and those, those uh time magazine or you know those, those ones that right. they would have art big stuff, articles yeah. on how the muppets were done and made and all that stuff so yeah so i would learn from all that wow so then you said you were just you had just graduated high school and you got straight into it like that huh yeah that's, right from there right from high school right on in there so did it change much uh your involvement or the process of the show for you from the starting to the final season? Huh. Uh, well, we got to do uh, uh, speaking roles here and there, but mostly we were kept to the background because that was what we were pick, coming to do kind of thing, which was the fraggle crossing in the, you know, behind there in the shot uh, or, uh, or uh, doing something. But we got roles here and there. All of us had a chance to do a speaking role. Um, um, uh, the storyteller, was is one that I, I got a hold of because Richard Hunt did her in the uh, Terrible Tunnel episode and he had to do Sesame Street that week so he couldn't do uh, the storyteller anymore so they gave me the storyteller and I think it was the Caves of Boredom or Booba Rock I think was the episode name that, that, that I first did the storyteller in and uh, we had her swooning for Traveling Matt and uh, so uh, Jerry Jewell love that and we, we went with that kind of thing so actually it was bp nickel that wrote that episode that's right so bp and i sort of uh, uh all, all the the shows all the episodes that i came in with a speaking role for the storyteller uh b 
BP Nickel did. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, we had a good chemistry from from that. Um, and uh, I did uh, one of the minstrel characters, Brio, uh, which was again it was a fraggle with glasses. All my characters had glasses coincidentally uh brio had glasses she was a green fraggle that played the symbol she was the only fraggle in the group the rest of them were all these you know creatures in the minstrels and uh so i did her she had a speaking role i think two times two different times and my background puppet morris again is uh got glasses and um yeah right here hi there and he got a couple of lines here and there and uh but mostly i use this guy in the background beautiful yeah i got caught up in my in my own court here (laughs) no and it was just i mean that was such a a beautiful show and i think um really utilized almost more so than than the muppet show just i not only you had the original songs in every episode but also there were just so many like group scenes and you would just like it really felt like it was a cavern cavernous space with all sorts of like characters and population and stuff yeah. Can you just talk about like what it was like the camaraderie of people like you know um, hanging out with Frank Meshkalite and, and like some of those other Canadian puppeteers at the same time that you're also right. you know seeing right. obviously right. Jerry and Richard and and Dave and them. Well, it was very much a family yeah. group. That's for sure. It was all like a family, uh, which didn't mean you didn't have disagreements with families, but sometimes you do have disagreements with them. But um, uh, it was great. I mean, and they were quite uh, the jokers of the lot were um, uh, Frank. Uh, uh, Frank Meshler was one of them. Frank came in, in the last two seasons of Fraggle Rock. Uh, Gord Robertson and Rob Mills were the biggest they, they they were quite the pranksters and you never knew what they were going to do they they were that dangerous <laughs> you know they'd be the type that would pull your pants down oh, let's put it that way <laughs> oh, geez. no they were great guys they were good guys they were, they were a lot of fun uh, they they there was one time uh we had a power failure in the studio and uh rob and gord went out ran down the street of down young street in the gourd costumes without oh, the heads gosh. but oh, in the gourd yeah, costumes <laughs> so there's a headless you know junior and a headless paw running down uh young street while the power oh, was goodness. off <laughs> this is and then it took hours for they get the get the cameras all queued back up and everything right. but the, yeah yeah, so they did things like that, and so there was a lot of that kind of stuff going on. And uh, Dave Goles and Steve Whitmire had this ritual where they would try to scare each other the pieces. Uh, uh, Dave would be hiding in one place, and Steve would come around the corner and come jump out and scare him. And and Steve would do the same to Dave. And that's where one episode came from, uh, "Scared Silly," I believe it was called, uh, where they uh, where Boober is, and Wembley are trying to out scare each other, kind of thing. Oh. So yeah, so that happened in reality. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. We had we had Steve on a couple uh, months ago, and he was telling us some of those stories. They were they were quite something yeah, to hear. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> they were funny. They, they were uh, lovingly brutal to each other. Right. It sounded like. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Yeah, Rich Richard was Richard was, uh, always wanted to come off as a tough character, Richard Hunt. But inside, he had a hard, very much a heart of gold. He was, he was a really good guy, and uh, uh, but he would he would never let you know it kind of thing. It's just like, oh yeah, what are you gonna do about it? In your face, you know that kind of thing. So that's uh, that was sort of like Richard Hunt, but really a really lovely guy. Kind of thing. And, and and Jerry Nelson, Jerry Nelson was a sweetheart too. He was a real good guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I, right. Richard, um, I think started. His, uh, directed a couple episodes is like sort of his directorial yes. debut, so that must have just been a really a nice power trip for him. <laughs> I imagine. Get power, yeah. power, ah, great power. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, yeah. He, uh, oh yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah. I remember him directing. Yeah, he 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 directed the last uh, minstrel episode. Oh okay. Uh, the honk of honks, I believe, was the title. Uh, if I get these wrong, folks. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> They'll fix it in the comments, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> we know the type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. So he he directed that one, and and he did a pretty good job. It was just very well done, you know. Uh, and they they did some camera trickery shots there too in that because uh, we had to have a whole cavern of fraggles. Well, there's only yay many of us to do the fraggles, right? So what they had to do is they had to lock off the camera and shoot the top section with everybody doing puppets, and then keep that lock off and do the bottom section with the puppets, and then it's just put together. Mm -hmm. And it was just like one complete shot where everybody's in there kind of thing. So that, that was one of the trick shots he had to do for that week kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Well, in, in your experience in being on there, is there a moment that sticks out as being like one of the most ambitious or, and or crazy like moments that they tried to film, even if it didn't necessarily look like it on what the monitor showed, but like from underneath with like a shot with like the most people or the most. Why are we doing this? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. A why are a why are we doing this moment? <laughs> well, early, very, 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 very early, where you are not used to this kind of thing, you are surprised by a lot of things and how simple things actually are. That we you know, we're the most you know seems to be the most complicated. Get your tail out of here. It seems to be the most complicated, but in reality, is is the most simplest of shots. Um, when we did we did a uh, we we had done another opening sequence prior to to the one where jerry is having gobo running down the hall in the theme uh for that one it was a very different opening and at the end of that there's supposed to be all the fraggles in the world are supposed to go do that down a fraggle rock kind of thing like that and um so we didn't have enough of us performers to do it so they brought in shop people writing staff everybody so there's wow. jerry jewel down there with a puppet and everybody's in there with a puppet so we had the whole room with everybody was doing a puppet even the janitor was doing the puppet now i'm just teasing there but uh, <laughs> I, it could have been i don't know but uh, i said jerry i said jerry what are you doing here he said yeah yeah they pulled me back in again you know because he used to do puppetry <laughs> right. way back in the early years he was a tamanella for for a lot of those uh, these a few of those old uh, uh, commercials and stuff that jim did so yeah yeah and so there was that and um watching jim perform for the first time is pure magic uh, uh you he just it looks like chaos when he's down there moving because jim can move pretty darn fast and he's like all over the place but as you look on the monitor it, it's looking very much in control it looks good but down here it looks like crazy yeah. and he's just like all over the place you know so fragrance went to tell, to catch your fragrance in them you know that i don't know how he did that uh, you know that song so fast but he, he did it fast wow was there a different tone when he was there because from what i understand he wasn't there very often to shoot for that show you mean other than angelical sounds in the background? No, no just, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, um, it, it, it was a very, um, uh, it was really, everybody was excited when Jim was around because daddy's here, you know, daddy's home, you know, and you're, you're very excited. And uh, uh, he, he kept everything very light and on a good note and everything. Jim was very good. You know, he, he never complained about anything. He was always laughing and, and uh, 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 loved what he was watching when he was a director. He just loved watching them go through playing around kind of thing when he directed. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we, we kind of wish he was there more, but, it, but he wasn't, you know, he, yeah. cause he was doing, I guess, uh, from what I understand, dark crystal or labyrinth at the same time kind of thing. Yeah, so, great. you know, Obviously, he had to go off and fly off and do those, so and left us there. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind me asking, and if it, this is something you'd rather not talk about, but you've mentioned um, that you um, have lived your life with cerebral palsy, um, can you describe um, what um, if there were any physical limitations to? Because it's obviously it's such a, a physically demanding job being a puppeteer. Can you talk about um, what that experience was like? Well, in those days, I could pretty well handle everything that they could, you know, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe a little slower here and there, but not very much. But the frustrating thing is there was that air, the, the air of the disabled person here. We've got to be careful. He could come around, you know, he could, CBC's mind, 
was thinking lawsuit, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So uh, they wouldn't allow me to do some of the things that I felt I could do. Uh, I remember very much one time Jerry Nelson asked if I could help him assist on the trash heap. And I scooted under there and they said, no, 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 we can't have you going under there. We can't have you doing that. And I said, why not? I was already under it. I said, why not? You know, <laughs> and uh, said, no, we just, we just can't, we can't let you do that. And I said, okay, fine. So I scoot it back out. And that was the end of that. But then, you know, uh, so it, it meant you missed a little bit of things you could have been doing because they, they were a little too cautious about it. And I don't blame them or anything. You know, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, they're, they're, they're concerned and they, you know, it's nice to know that they care, but still, you know, um, um, so I, I was given a lot of stuff in the beginning, but somehow it started uh, uh, ta tapering out kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah. So, so there was that little problem there. Yeah. 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 Well, looking back, do you think that that was probably the right call that they made for you personally? Or do you I, wish you had a little bit more decision into it? I wish they had asked me first. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you ask, if they ask you first and you feel, oh, no, I can't do that. No, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Then I would tell them if they, if I felt that I could do that and I'd say, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You know, no problem. So it's, it's a lot of assumption. Kind yeah. of thing. Or like trusting that, you know, your own limits of yourself. Yes. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. And I would at yeah. that time, I would know what I could do. And I know that, okay, I'm not going to be fast enough to do that kind of thing, but you know, yeah. um, I can do something else, you know, kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there'd be that, that, that'd be a little problem right there. I've never said this ever, ever, ever to anybody. So, you know, it's between you and me and a, whoever millions of people that see this now. <laughs> oh, <really? So. laughs> no. And I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I, I think, um, there are a lot of people out there, um, and I could I could speak for myself. Um, I've I've dealt with my own um, physical limitations with um, being I've had chronic illness growing up, and um, so sometimes just you know being able to keep your arm up in the air was something that was tiring, and it, it felt like a barrier to entry um, at times. So to hear someone who was able to persevere through that, I'm sure is really inspiring for a lot of the people listening or, or watching. So we appreciate yeah. you sharing that. Yeah, up, up until about 10 years or 15 years ago, I could I could stand up and, and do that and walk around with a puppet. No mm -hmm. problem. Now, since the back is pulled and done all what it's doing, I can't do that now. I can still sit here and, and do characters, you know, no right. problem. Um, but, uh, uh, and if I don't jerk or, or anything, you know, really bad to, to damage my hip here, I'll be fine. I'm fine kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, go for it. You, you also, no, I was going to say, you also shared this really lovely moment um, that you've you've now post, posted on your own uh, YouTube feed of um, you performing with Jim at um, a, a kind of, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Was it Last a, time I a, saw a him, yeah, from the heart, very yeah. special arts. From the heart, very special arts. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I went to Washington, D.C. there and. Yeah, that was really great. Um, last time I saw Jim, and uh, uh, we got to do that nice uh, being green thing. I screwed up in at near the end, but still, it was good. <laughs> what a that ass. week, I had a yeah. I had a cold that that day too, so my oh, no gosh. my nasal was sort of uh, stuffed up a bit. So it wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be, but everybody seemed to tell me, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you think so. <laughs> Glad you think it. But anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, and it must have yeah. meant so much to, because I, I imagine, you, you know, you had to go through the process of asking Jim and seeing if he had the time to do that. And I, I didn't realize it was in Washington, D.C. Like just that whole, yeah. um, it just, what a, gosh, what a special memory that must have been. Yeah, it was very special. Uh, they They called me. The Henson offices and asked uh, Jim was on the line. And I said, "Oh, hello, Jim." I'm thinking, "Wow, okay, Jim's calling me. All right, this is, uh oh, this is interesting. right, <laughs> uh oh, either this is good or very bad." Uh, but yeah. um, anyway, uh, uh, he he asked they asked if I could uh, go down over to Washington D.C. and do this uh, from the heart's very special arts, and I said I'd be happy to, be proud to. Uh, so uh, I got flown over there, and I had these two frog puppets which i uh, he they originally wanted the puppet that i auditioned with to be there but 
that puppet was long since gone because it was down in my parents' basement. And you know what happens in the basement? Oh, moisture. Yeah. <laughs> moisture. The puppet, when you picked it up after that, it kind of fell apart it's kind of dull. thing. That was, that was the end of that. So I said, well, I, I'll try to make another puppet, but, you know, it's a little time kind of thing, but uh, I'll, I'll see what I can't do. So I, I uh, uh, thing is, I'm at that point, I was used to making too good of a puppet. Because the Kermit puppet I had at that time was, you know, not as good a looking as like what I can do now. So it's like <laughs> they kind of wish that I had been able to do it the the old materials and stuff. Well, I can't find that old stuff anymore, and that was like upholstery material off of a couch or something, <laughs> and it's just not there. And uh, I'm a little too good at what I do now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which uh, you know, I could have stressed it, I suppose, and made it look really bad and all awful and all that but anyway i took up the two frogs to him and i said uh here's the two choices uh, which one would you like to use and he, oh, and he put, you know pulled the nose up on one and then he pulled the nose up on the other and this one here and it turned out to be a little one that looked like robin the frog kind of thing and uh so i ended up using that one's a lighter green than what robin would be uh robin almost the same color green as kermit and this one's a little quite a bit lighter but um, I used him, and uh, and I thought at the time, well, I'll try to make it a young Kermit. Well, that was a bad decision on my part, but uh, but still, uh, uh, they wanted what I did then, so I, I should have kept with that. But instead, I went, um, oh, I, I went a little higher like that, you know, kind of thing like that. So, uh, but um, uh, I felt it was better off with the the other way. But every, like I said, people seemed to think it was pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great performance, and we'll make sure to include it in the, the show notes for people if, if they haven't seen it yet to uh, to watch it, and it's, it's just a really yeah. incredible thing. Yeah, yeah, just to have have that experience, and yeah, and especially it's just even nice that it's been documented that you can look back at it, and so yeah. we can talk about it now. It's it's the yeah. important thing of like yeah, just remembering like where you came from, and yeah, what brought you here. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a funny little story in that that when we and me and Jim were about to ready to leave and from each other, you know, it's the end of it and everything, and we we had to go our separate ways. And he says, "How are you doing? What are, what are you doing now? You you had a show there in Halifax that you were doing." And I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, Blizzard Island, yeah." And he said, "How did that go?" And I said, "Oh, Jim, they canceled it." And Jim said, hmm, "They canceled me too." <laughs> so so I was like, "Oh, okay, all right." <laughs> I said, well, Jim, it's been good and it's a lot of fun. And he's always hugged and said goodbye and shook hands. And and uh, he, he went off. To, and you could tell that he was going off to do something because he, he had that busy, hurried feel to him kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's mm -hmm. funny. I thought it was funny at the, you know, when it, when it right. happened oh, no, you know, no, no, after no, the definitely. fact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, I yeah. One thing I want to I go back to a little bit is, um, so so you graduated from high school and got straight into this at what so the, you were also involved in puppet building on fraggle rock as well no. though oh you no, weren't no 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 oh no, i was okay. perform strictly performing on that show okay now i was building my own stuff there got it and picked up a lot of tricks and how to do things there when I was making my own characters for Blizzard Island, which was a show I co-created with a friend of mine, Stoney Ripley, that uh, aired in Canada for 12 episodes and then got <laughs> cut kind of thing. Okay. But um, uh, but yeah, yeah, so I, I, was, I was building those, but strictly on Fraggle Rock, it was just performing the same as the Muppet Specials. That was performance kind of thing. Gotcha. Was, did, did you ever build with any... Of those productions at all that Henson produced? No, no, because oh, they had their own okay. staff of people. Of course, it's, yeah. This is sort of think of it like a union type of thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. They're, they're, it's their job. It's what they're supposed to do is to build the puppets. I'm there hired to perform, and that's what I'm supposed to do. The yeah. guys who bring you the monitors, that's what they've got to do. You, yeah. you can't even cross over into that kind of thing. But gotcha. uh, they did teach me a lot when I was building up my, the Blizzard Island puppets and stuff. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, cause that was something um, that I know you, you've benefited from, and we've, we've talked about this on the show of like what, what you're able to learn just by seeing 
a really professional puppet and being able to put it on and understand what the proportions are and what some of the materials are, what it feels like on the inside. Um, can you talk about just like how much being able to work in that shop and see some of those professionally made puppets was able to like up your building game? Yeah, immensely, immensely. Uh, you, you, you learn how to apply the, the uh, glue on the foam properly. So you're not smearing it too badly, although sometimes it does still smear, but it doesn't matter if the character is being covered in, in fleece or fur. But in those days, uh, they did a lot of exposed foam puppets, right. uh, which you saw the, the, the pores, there was no, no fabric covering for them. Uh, the mayhem band was strictly, uh, exposed foam until I think, I think it was, uh, little, 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 I think Muppets, uh, Muppets treasure Island. I think that they started fleecing the mayhem band kind of thing, rather than having the exposed foam because, uh, movie cameras pick up a lot more than television cameras. So you really see the pores in them if, on a close up kind of thing. So I think that's why they did that. Uh, I don't know what, what decision was made to cover them kind of thing. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So at, at what point would you say personally, cause you know, I think a lot of, a lot of builders, you know, they, they're first starting out. You can usually tell that their first puppet was their first puppet. It's not as yeah. clean. It's not as, you know, polished looking. At what, at what point did you feel like you had a, you know, pretty solid professional level uh, product you were able to produce through building puppets? Um, well, you know, you have some level, you know, you know, you, you, uh, I, I never try to uh, fool, try to fool myself too much um, into believing that I, I am the great. Um, um, I, uh, I, you sort of don't see it yourself a lot of yeah. time. Other people will see it, but you won't. Because you're sort you of always, you always see the flaws in your own work. People look like, "Wow, that puppet's amazing!" And then when I look at it, I just see, I see, oh, well, I, yeah, no, I appreciate that. But you know, I wish I did this different. I wish I yeah. did that different. I wish, you know, yeah. Correct. You're always Correct. everyone's their own worst critic, usually. Correct. Correct. You think that you should have done better. You could, you could have done better by by doing this, this, and this kind of thing. I'm always thinking that every time, every puppet that I build is not good enough, kind of thing. Yeah. I think, ah, I don't know. That's that's, ah. Eh. You know, so, um, uh, so you're always thinking that. So I can, you can see why Muppets change over the years because they keep thinking that they're going to improve something more. <laughs> you know, they can do yeah. more to it, to the puppet. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you kind of, you don't really see it yourself a lot of the time. Yeah. 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 What, uh, can we talk a little bit about this, uh, Butch G cat that you have right behind you? What, uh, when did you create that character? That was created back in uh, 1988 or nine, I believe. Wow. Uh, and that was created for a tele uh, uh, CBC television carried an IW, what's called the IWK telethon, which was uh, IWK is, is the children's hospital around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to that hospital as a child when I had to get operations and uh, try to make my take, make me walk better and stuff. Uh, so I, I would do butch the cat for them to try to help bring in money to, to get uh, things for the hospital, like a, a EKG or, or, or a special cat scan or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, so um, creative the character for that. Actually, the character was actually uh, the puppet that I used at that time was going to be used as a background character for the Blizzard Island series. Because at one time we thought that the background characters within the show will all be cats, basically looming around the whole island. That kind of felt, way, they got rid of that idea because I was laughing too much during the pilot when I was re-recording. When I had to dub some lines for the pilot, I would hear these cat moans in the background. And my mind went to places it shouldn't have went to. And I started oh, laughing yeah. and laughing and laughing. The director wasn't laughing. The producer wasn't laughing, but I was laughing. And I said, I'm sorry, guys, but sounds like these cats are neat, you know, kind of thing. It, it's, it's too funny kind of thing. And that's when it was decided, no, nah, they're not going to do that kind of thing. So they decided not to populate the island background with, with, with 
with uh, cats and all that stuff. We ended up just having one cat for the show. But uh, so I had built a prototype for that. And uh, it it was a smaller puppet at the time. And uh, the eyes didn't move. The eyes move in this one. And uh, it was a much smaller one. It was kind of uh, kind of all the drab green kind of thing. And they came to me and said, well, we need a character who can work with the co-host on the show, whose name was Frank Cameron. He's a pretty big legend in these parts in, in Nova Scotia, Canada, because he was a uh, on the CBC News, uh, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the news. But, and and um, he was quite a jokester and quite funny. And they wanted somebody who could stand up to him and, you know, spar with spar with him. So I said, well, he's got to be a stinker, in other words. He's got to be quite a stinker character, and I, you know, a little stinker. And I said, well, that could be maybe this cat here. And I took it off the rack and put it on. And maybe, maybe he could have a, you know, deep voice like that. And, you know, and then and be able to take on Frank Cameron kind of thing. So, yeah. So over the years, I've had to change the puppet because I put the puppet through all kinds of abuses. We had him eat ice cream one year. And we had a uh, Frank Cameron pushed his head into a cream pie another year. Uh, so the, the puppet got tortured quite a bit. And then uh, um, after that, uh, I decided to build a bigger one that I could slip in faster because by, when you got the puppet wet from washing off ice cream and stuff, it really drags the puppet. It's hard to put on your arm. So in redesigning it, I decided, I decided I had to make it bigger and to give it a little more personality by just having the eyes open and close. Kind of thing. But yeah. Hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> nice to see you, babies. Hey, you look boffo, <laughs> just boffo. Yeah, yeah, Buffalo. You know, I never thought so, about yeah, that he, building. He, yeah. Building my puppets that's catch, to withstand yeah, that, ice cream. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I so can do the scooter have... move. Look, this is a scooter. Look, mom, <laughs> this is a scooter. <laughs> anyway, yeah, go ahead. No, I was, I was just gonna say. So, um, would you would have would you have to have multiples so that when it got you know destroyed by the cake or ice cream that you would have like later on? One yeah, I, okay. that was another decision I made. I've only got the one puppet. And uh, it, it's it's now the actual original puppet is sitting in my high school uh, in a uh, an area that's inside glass. He's inside glass kind of thing. Oh, so wow. he's on display in, in Hogwash District High School, uh, the original uh, Butch G. Cat. And he had his uh, IWK shirt on kind of thing. Oh, cool. So, but uh, yeah, so this sort of my alter ego, whereas Kermit was a Jim's alter ego this this guy i was most comfortable with because i can say anything i want and get away with it <laughs> yeah yeah get away that, with it baby uh, yeah this, is that exposed foam on his nose yes it is yeah oh, you want yeah. right, see all those pores oh there's a little lint there too but yeah yeah there you go <laughs> is that what his muzzle is too is his oh. muzzle exposed what's that is his muzzle exposed it's a little hard to tell on the camera that's uh, uh, Antron Fleece. It is, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I'm old, baby. I'm an old puppet right now. I haven't, I hope this thing's old. This thing's, uh, what What year did I put on this thing? Put the year on? Uh, <laughs> a 2004 I that I built this particular oh, wow. model. Okay. 2004. So he's uh, oh, yeah. he's getting on there. <laughs> you can well, see, his mouth good. is also coming apart there, too. You know, it's a lot of. A little toasty. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is in great shape, though, for being that old. That's. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't realize that the character the character was that old uh, that you said in in eighty eight that you created. I was I was yeah. surprised to hear that. That's that's awesome. There's lots of me, baby. There's been lots of me. There's been models down the road that got tossed away after a while, but uh, this is this is the last one right now. I'm, I'm the last of my kind at the, at this it, point. Did um did kind of all scary, of them isn't it? or multiple of them have that blink mech that you have in there? Uh, only one would have the eye mechanism. The other models were stand were stationary eyes, uh, and because if you're going to put the torture through, I wouldn't want to put it through the torture with these, oh, uh, yeah, with yeah. the mechanism because that's hard to build. That that's a hard device to rig. Now this is sort of uh, it's wire inside of wire. It's cable inside of cable that's pushing the eyes back and forth, and another cable that's running down the back. And uh, down below here, where you have a trigger here, that you're. Uh, let's get a look at that. Would you mm -hmm. 
push out to open up and pull down to pull them down. So, yeah. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so there's no, there's no, you don't have any springs in yours. Heck, no, this is old school, baby. <laughs> That's right. I'm real old school. That's but right. I'm good old school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So and so and you're not using strings. No. You're you're using the the no. push and pull wire. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it's oh, his his nose is too his bridge from the nose back. It's too far back to bend your finger back to oh, of course. control oh, something yeah, like yes. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you'd have to be double jointed or worse. <laughs> or, or, or. <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah. I didn't uh, notice that in the design. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking about the. So you have to keep those things more. in mind when you do something like that. Kind of oh, of when I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I built the prototype Gonzo, I didn't have to make an ex- mechanism inside of it because it's just it's it's a poseable figure. Mm-hmm. But I told them, you know, you probably should try to put something in there, maybe to click, 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 something like a gear type of thing that can click one way and click the other way, or either open his eyes up down, or down. But I guess they obviously didn't want to go that route. So there we go. <laughs> um, uh, but the Gonzo I made for myself, I have eye mechanisms in there, uh, but I couldn't do it the way Dave Golds did it because Dave Golds has this whole mishmash of, Thing that goes in there because Dave Golds was a puppet builder before he, you know, became a Muppeteer kind of thing. So he had this whole engineering thing figured out because he was an engineer originally, and uh, uh, it's really hard to figure out that mechanism. So I end up doing the same thing that I did with Butch, which was had the cable and have it run down. I don't know how good you guys can see that, but have the cable I mm-hmm. let go, the cable run through there and up through into this thing here, kind of thing. So yeah, and that's you know, what I, I did with him. We um we're we're close friends with Jim Krupa, um, who I know rebuilt a lot of the Gonzos when uh, Puppet Heap took on that build. And he, he redid the, the whole, um, the whole uh, mech design. And I think also put it out on the, the arm rod uh, as yeah. well, because he was just like, no, that's going to be better for you to, in the long run, to be able yeah. to perform. So from what I understood too, it was always breaking down. Yeah. From what I understood, yes. that was one of the things that they said about Dave Goals' design was it was very easy breakable. It broke very easily and quite often kind of thing. So, yeah. No, it's okay, though, Dave. We're, we're not we're not mad at you. We're, we're not saying anything bad at you. You're a genius, Grovel, no, Grovel, de- Grovel, Grovel, not, Grovel. Yes. Dave Goals, you're a genius, Grovel, 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 <laughs> yeah. Grovel, Grovel, Dave Goals, Grovel. Yeah. That's so, right. Yeah. Wow. Go well, ahead, baby. A- I, I don't. You were holding up uh, the mechanism there. Uh, what what is that housing that you're using there? What the that, heck is that? Uh, uh, that's a that's a uh, it's a plastic hose. Um, and and uh, what they, I don't remember the name of it now. It was on printed on the side of this, but I think it wiped itself off when all my finger moving and all that stuff. I wiped it off. I think. Yeah. So am yeah, I seeing? Is that some? Is that a plastic tube with a, a wooden dowel in it, and then the dowel yes, slides up and down? Correct. Correct. And uh, can, okay, yeah, and that's a little PVC uh, hook there that you're using as a as a toggle. So you're saying is there there's two cords that come out? There's only there's one cord that pushes and pulls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah got it. And I had to I have two of them that are joined here, but I got to find a better way to do that. And then it becomes one. Yeah, single yeah. What cord is that for? Here oh. on uh, oh. two cords from I'm sorry, two cords oh, oh, from here oh, on. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Because you have to have them both one is fixed here and the other is fixed there got it sort of thing it's it's got to be uh, you take pliers and you do that way before you put it on the puppet kind of thing for and, sure uh, then you do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that's uh that's how, that's how it's working baby it's wow. kind of gross but there you go the inner workings of butch g cat i'm scared i'm really scared <laughs> yeah, really yeah scared. No, that's a yeah. that's a cool idea go ahead, no, it's baby. helpful for people to know and especially you know uh different styles and different methods for for hmm. accomplishing ultimately the same thing but it's yeah. a matter of you know preference and you know, materials available and that's all that's all <laughs> yeah you know i get it because yeah. I, I get kind of i get these kind of build questions all the time and then someone will send me a picture or something and they'll say is this is this right <laughs> and i say does it work they're like yeah, yeah. then it's right <laughs> yeah well, yeah exactly <laughs> if it did what you wanted it to do now the question is is there a better way to do it maybe is there a cleaner way to do it that, that something i might be able to help you with yeah. you know at a certain yeah. uh, point it's it's a it'll be as good as your skills with those tools and materials are right but right. uh but yeah no i like 
I love seeing, you know, you, you know, seeing how someone built a mechanism that they designed themselves kind of says a lot about like how their brain works, you know, not only in the way it's put together, but even the mat- materials they use, you yeah. know, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, just it's all different. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, uh, and uh, it's whatever works the best for you, really. Um, uh, although you, you kind of wish you had better ideas, like how to, you know, <laughs> I'd like to change it so i wouldn't have to have this type of thing on here but yeah. uh i'll have to someday 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 maybe i'll figure it out but right now yeah. not not now baby not now yeah <laughs> one more thing i was gonna just uh ask you about is uh the way that you treat a lot of your uh fabrics and stuff because uh, especially in looking at uh like uh, that fuzzy that you held up from the master replica build um like uh, texturing the furs and stuff is something that a lot of people Ugh. ask about. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and uh, trust me, I, I I do it too. And it can be it can be grueling, and not only grueling, but uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Risky, because if you overdo it or do something incorrectly, man, it can it make changes you have everything. To start over. Yeah, it's like it's and like it's, I, often, it's yeah, it's like the late great Tim Miller said, it will change the puppet. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And, and getting that fur, like, and, and this fur is pretty ragged, but this is pretty old too, but you know, it's, it's you know, that kind of thing. Uh, this is obviously the, uh, Mo- what do they call, how do they pronounce that? Mol- Mol- Mogul, um, a Mongolian. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. the one. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's more like, it's that kind of fabric. Yeah. I that, that's my favorite mm-hmm. to use. Yeah, too. it is. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I got some fresh stuff, but I've never been able to get the um, time or the money to make another Butch the Cat right now. But yeah. someday down the road, he will be replaced, I hope. I hope. Because yeah. it's a, this one's a pretty, uh, I can feel the foam starting to go inside there kind of thing. Yeah. Help me. Help. <laughs> Help. Do you uh, want to you... go, go fun? Help. <laughs> go, Help. Go fund me. <laughs> go fund me. <laughs> Go fund me. <laughs> Save Butch. <laughs> where, where do you Save uh... our puts. Save our cat. Save our cat. <laughs> where do you get a lot of your supplies? Uh from you from the USA. <laughs> <laughs> Everything comes from the USA. Uh so yeah, um uh I've been able to get a foam from a local area, uh engineer's foam here uh in Toronto. But still, that's, again, you have to ship in that kind of stuff. The same with all this fur and stuff and the Antron fleece you have to get shipped in. Uh, yeah. Antron fleece isn't as good as it used to be. It, it, yeah. Uh, well, not yeah, only you, not only yeah. is it not as good as it used to be, but uh, it's uh, it's like not even really being made anymore. Um, yeah. There's a new, there's a new uh, type of fleece that they're manufacturing for puppet building. Uh, instead of the nylon, it's a polyester. And, yeah, I was uh, introduced to that by the puppet uh, pelts. Uh, puppet pelts. Yep. I and I asked them to send me a sample of this thing. Yeah. I don't really got to admit I don't like it. Yeah. Kinda. It's See, too short. Know, it's too it's too short. It, it it is a little shorter and I and actually I've been talks with them too and they're hoping to um get the mills to make a longer version of it as well. But yeah, uh, if it's, they did it's, a longer version it might 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 work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I've used it for a couple projects too. And, and I actually, I, I like it a lot. It, it's definitely a oh, little you bit. Do. Oh, it's, it's worked for you. It, well, it's worked for me, but then again, you know, first of all, like, like any materials, you really want to think of a way to use it at its best, you know, and yeah. the same reason you wouldn't use like a reticulated foam for the same parts that you would use like an L200 EVA foam. Yeah. Is that it right there? Yeah, that's it right there. And you can still, you can sort of see the seam line. Yeah. I did a test hand sew with it. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, yeah. So, so I, I've built, for, for first of all, I like it for, ex- especially for very small characters. Because I think sometimes that slightly shorter pile can look really nice and really clean. And mm-hmm. also for characters where you're, where a character is mostly fleece anyway, using it as a, a contrast fabric so for example if i had a rabbit that was all completely made out of fleece i would probably use that like polyester fleece for like the inside of the ears or or the Mm. eyelids or something just so that there is a slightly difference to the fabric and it doesn't look i feel like if it's 
I, I made a rabbit before that was all just the Antron fleece, and it looked nice, but I think the fact that it was all the same pile of fleece makes it look a little bit toyish. Like, they mm. just use the yeah. same fabric for everything. So I yeah. really like exploring different ways of using it. And and the realistic thing is, it might just be the future, the only future material available anyway. It may so, very well be. So you may yeah. have not. I mean, like the other fleece, we were kind of forced to use that because the original 80s Antron fleece was really, oh, that was stuff. That stuff was gold. Yeah. That was beautiful. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, they started getting cheaper and making it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and uh, it got worse and worse and worse kind of thing so yeah it'd be nice if they could do it a little thicker I, the, my problem is uh, the seam line situation which i i have there so yeah like you said you somehow got to be careful about it kind of thing so yeah 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 yeah, yeah I've, I've had a lot of success with it I do, I do like it it's what i built that uh for for people who are watching this or familiar with it, the figment puppet that i did on my channel that that um that was completely with the uh polyester uh, right. Fleece, yeah, and I was very happy with it. So, bring yeah. back, and like, and like I said, back, it, bring back my Antron fleece to me. To <laughs> me. If, if it becomes the only thing that's available in the future, you might want to get used to it now. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'll never get used to it. No, no, no. It'll never happen. I tell you, hey, I tell you hey, it'll never I happen. St I still like my rotary phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them like they used to. No, no they don't. You in embrace... my day. <laughs> <laughs> embrace my the change. Day. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so is like, there anything? Like your uh... grandfather. Yeah, like <laughs> That's <40. right. laughs> <laughs> any uh uh future aspirations for for what you want to do with your characters and building or are you just mostly focused on commissions and getting commissions at this time at your own pace commissions and getting from commissions at my own pace that's a kind of that's hard to say in a <laughs> <row>. <laughs> uh, uh because uh un you know unless unless things change with my back uh, you know if i if things could change with my back i'd love to get back into performing again kind of thing yeah. uh but um that's hard to get to get even yeah. at best you know even even when you can do things it's hard to get a hold of right. uh, so yeah so yeah. yeah and i'm still making things for uh am i understanding here and there kind of thing. okay yeah them, uh, here and there yeah and i did get to do one am i understanding uh sh uh uh short video for them uh i did a uh a, a dog character uh that was different from the other dog character that i initially made for him uh, the, uh and so yeah and it turned out pretty good but again you know it was a lot of it's flight you have to fly over to london ontario and you have to you know they have to put you up and all that stuff so yeah the uninvolved thing yeah well, yeah <laughs> Let, let's drink and commiserate okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not just, just water kidding. in just these kidding. cups <laughs> no 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 um no I, it's it's been so wonderful um to talk to you and just as as we begin to wrap up here um do you have a, a good story we always ask people um as as we conclude to share a, a funny story something that gave you puppet tears in the moment something that wasn't going right at the time but now looking back you're able to kind of laugh about it and uh appreciate oh the the humor of the situation i'm sure you have a million of them yeah, those wow. are the things. Oh too. my gosh. Um <laughs> I try to forget sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's trying to remember. That's the problem because yeah, my memory's yeah. gotten you know, it's has been a long, 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 long time ago. But uh, uh the things that, that brings the smile to me the most is the friendship that I made back then and remembering those people and how much I love them and, and everything. Uh, so that, that brings me the most joy right there. Uh the most one of the most hilarious, but the problem is uh, everybody's told this story, and it's the one where um, we were doing the 30th anniversary special, um, 30 Muppets, a celebration of 30 years. Um, and uh, we were all singing the Rainbow Connection at the end of the show, you know, how, you know, and uh, uh, all that. And Jim was, Jim Henson was doing one of the rabbits. Now, the director who was directing it didn't know that Jim was in there with this rabbit and jim had been animating this rabbit like crazy all over the place and uh the director told our floor director wayne moss could you please tell that rabbit not to upstage everybody and <laughs> he turned to the director and said do you want to tell jim or should i <laughs> jim jim henson is the one doing that rabbit kind of thing oh uh, uh never mind <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh gosh, um, that's a great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I have heard I, that I, before. I think so it was. Good. I think they didn't know it was Jim Henson. And I think Wayne asked, "Who's doing the right white rabbit up there?" And Jim's head popped up. Who me? Kind of thing. And, <laughs> and then I think never that's mind. What he said. You, you want to yeah. tell him or shall I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just gonna say. Great work. <laughs> Great Keep work, going. sir. Spot on. Spot on, man. Spot on. Yeah, so that, wow. that's one of the, the great. Everybody had a laugh out of that, in, including oh, for Jim. Sure. So it was, yeah. That is funny. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of um, I went to a event with um, Rick Lyon. He came locally to do a presentation about his work and his puppetry, and he shared oh, uh, a, a, click of, uh, a clip of a video where I think it was him, somebody, I think it was maybe him, Frank, and Jim, or, uh, yeah, and they were, like, doing some characters in the background, but one character was doing, I think they were doing a dance, and they were doing all the moves, but one character was doing it completely out of time and kept making mistakes, and uh, I I believe that he said that was Jim. So it was that same kind of similar uh, story, of um, him, he, he must have just been playing with it on purpose. He was, playing, he was upstaging yeah. everybody. <laughs> yes, yeah, on purpose. This one to... rabbit, I think, was just like all over the place, all yeah. over the thing. Uh, uh, I think was was him on the who who now I'm losing memory of some because uh, I remember there was somebody on a chair going back and forth. I'm not sure if that was the rabbit or not, but that was another funny moment where this somebody was upstaging by having this character on a chair going back and forth with everybody and said so it's the someday we'll find it the rainbow connection so everybody's going back and forth doing their characters and this you know rabbit or whatever doing all that stuff so yeah that's so funny yeah. oh my gosh that's it's great funny. yeah what a great story yeah. wow all right well one more thing we need from you too is uh can you tell us the best way for people to find your work well, right now, um, I'm on uh, www.anguspuppets.com. Mm. Uh, we can't seem to change that page because uh, 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 it's, it's being done by Yahoo. And anytime they gave us the codes to try to get back in, it never worked. So we could not get in there to change it. Oh. So we're going to have to oh. place my website on a different server and find somebody else to do it. But right now, that, uh, my uh the email there goes to a yahoo email but i prefer it to be uh uh butch g cat at gmail.com kind Great. of thing is another way to get a hold of me if you want to write to me kind of thing yeah yeah but, uh, you, yeah do you have so, any social media are you on instagram or anything like that where uh, people can follow your work uh, i instagram i don't think i am uh i think i am on twitter but i don't use it <laughs> Yeah. But I am on if you think you're on it, you Facebook. definitely know. You, yeah. Facebook, I'm on. That's another yeah. questionable place. Facebook. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. Twitter now. more so. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, especially if. Takes um, over that one. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we've been friends on Facebook for a long time, even though we haven't interacted much on there, just because I've uh, I've always enjoyed following your work and your builds uh you. they've been very inspirational from your uh, from your uh how how wonderful you are technically with it and how beautiful i'm the on puppets. youtube i'm on youtube <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, YouTube. Butch, right. yeah i'm on youtube here and there yeah yeah, what's yeah your i haven't YouTube done channel? anything for a while thanks a lot terry for your back but yeah <laughs> i haven't done anything much more new but i am on there what's, <laughs> what's the youtube channel <laughs> okay there we go anyway yeah yeah, you you were saying there. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. no. What is the YouTube channel? YouTube, uh, it um, it's Terry Angus. Terry Angus, okay. Terry Angus. great. Just Perfect. simply yep. Terry Angus. We'll make sure we plug that then too. All right. Yeah, you can put in Butch G Cat in this in the search engine. It'll find it too. Yeah, kind of wonderful. So All right. Well, again, Terry, yeah. thank you so much for your time. This was wonderful learning about your uh, what, what brought you here, and uh, we'll hopefully have you on again in the future too. Okay, great. Oh, it's the wrong one. Okay, great. <laughs> Bye, Budge. I'm taking over. I'm taking over you. Look deeply into my eyes. You are me, and I am you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, I think that's real. He's me, and I am him. Him, him is I, and I am me. Uh, we'll see you later. One of those things. <laughs> we'll see you later.